Public Q and A presence ask Reddit question, how do you want to die? While standing somewhere in public, and while being watched by several people just suddenly evaporate causing large amounts of confusion. Old people. It's the rapture. Young people. It's the snap. The snap was just the rapture but faster. We call it the Veloci Rapture. Praise to Raptor Jesus. Go pray with your Veloci Pastor. Stake through the heart by the last descendant of a vampire hunting family who've been seeking revenge for generations. Belmonts. Bloody tears intensifies. One small hitch. While it's implied, you didn't specify that you were actually a vampire in this scenario. So you'd be being murdered by said hunter mistakenly as collateral damage. Trying something I watched on a Red Bull commercial. Red Bull gives you wings. Jumps off cliff. I want to fall asleep. Have a beautiful dream and dissolve into it. Honestly yes there's something really comforting about dissolving into a dream, and never realizing it like this is just your reality now. Edit. I went to bed last night not thinking anything about this comment, and then I wake up to this thank you y'all are amazing. Not sure if I am the only one but almost all my dreams are hella weird, I can't imagine dying while dreaming about skiing from the top of the Eiffel Tower. Well I can imagine dying while skiing from the top of the Eiffel Tower really well. Would be pretty challenging to pull off not dying afterwards. There is no way to tell because she is lost in the land of sleep and he is too, and when they go there they never go together, and she is afraid this is also a preview of death, a place where there may be dreams, but never love, never home, never a hand to hold yours when squadrons of birds flock across the burnt orange sun at the close of day. Lizzie's story. That one hit me fucking hard especially having my wife leave not too long ago. Sleeping alone and dreaming alone and knowing there is a place, sometimes that has dreams, and never love again is exactly how I feel death will be like, and I am terrified. After my father died, I had several dreams where we were together. In one dream, I think I was a child, and following him from the back. So I couldn't even see his face but I could actually smell his own distinct smell as I followed him. In some of the dreams, it was somewhat frightening to be with him as I slowly came to remember he was dead, but some of these dreams were comforting. My mom died about seven years ago, and my dad confided that he dreamed about her every night. I thought that was odd because I never did. Then my dad followed her a couple of years ago, and now my dreams are suddenly filled with both of them almost every night. The mind is a weird and beautiful thing. Paramedic here, I went to a beautiful DOA many years ago, an elderly lady who had passed in her sleep, and was found by her daughter the next day. There she was, laying in bed with the covers pulled up, looking for all the world like she was just deeply asleep aside of course from her color. She had her air conditioning running so the room was almost icy cold which helped slow the obvious usual processes that can turn a deceased person quite stinky quite rapidly in a tropical environment. The only thing that spoiled it was that she had a book opened and face down on her beside table. You're not supposed to touch anything at these scenes, but I couldn't resist checking the book as it appeared to be almost finished. She had just started the last chapter, she didn't get to finish her book. After that lovely story, I shall ruin the vibe by clarifying that these sorts of DOAs are very much in the minority. Most people die suddenly talking natural causes here while they are awake and doing things. Most of those aren't so pretty. I have been to hundreds of sudden deaths and believe me it's not pretty and most of the time in a very awkward place. I had a new start with me for training and at the end of the day they said I always thought people pass in bed. No they don't. Honestly, I think ID like to be poisoned, preferably with one that is quick and not too painful. 
There's an air of drama and mystery to being poisoned that I love who poisoned me. How did they get close enough to me to commit the dastardly act of slipping the poison into my food? Was I a spy? The victim of a scorned lover? Having an affair with a high-ranking government official that I tried to blackmail? Who knows? You also get the added element of it often not being obvious at first, which amplifies the intrigue. Maybe if I get really lucky it can be a poison that's only made in some bunker in the Russian mountains. A man can dream. Does a poison like that exist? There's even a poison which will make you feel euphoric beyond your wildest dreams, just the best feeling you've ever experienced before you slip into unconsciousness and never wake up again. It's called heroin. Oh. After my wife but only by a few minutes. So what kind of bomb would you like for me to place under your bed? Not all heroes wear capes. Bomb voyage. Monsieur Incroy Abel. An Incredi boy. Incredi boy. You're not affiliated with me. So dark I can taste at least 98% cacao. Hydrogen. Same here. Up is one of the worst or best films because of that fucking montage at the start. I don't want to outlive my wife. I have been thinking about this a lot lately. I really can't imagine living through my partner's death. I also don't want them to experience my passing. The song If We Were Vampires by Jason Isbell talks about that, and it hurts just thinking about it. I totally get this. Having a giant ass rocket attached to the back of my wheelchair and fly off the side of a cliff. LOL. Or if not that then probably dying in a 18th century sword duel. Hi. My name is U or D0CT0RWH0B0Y and this is Jackass. In sleep, peacefully, 100% unexpected, at an old age. If not that, then I would like to be ripped apart by a pack of wolves. If not that, alcohol poisoning. Edit. Enough people told me, I wrote fish poisson instead of poison. I am sorry about that. You don't want that one. Nasty way to go. Heroin overdose far more pleasant. Oh that sounds nice. You sound like you're window shopping. Oh I like that one too but that one's cool and gruesome. But it has one of the coolest scientific names defenestration, if you bleed out from it you can also get the cool word wombo combo with exsanguination by defenestration. Definitely in my sleep, like my grandpa. Not screaming and panicking like his passengers. Said close to the same before I saw yours. Cheers. I am similar but at the climax of a BJ on my coke-fueled 101st birthday. Death by choking on spunk at 101, gotcha. Like Major Kong from Dr. Strangelove, Writing a nuclear bomb seems cool. Edit. Spoilers. Got to admit, that sounds sick as hell. Love that scene lol. Snow snow. The spirit is willing but the flesh is spongy and bruised. Crushed pelvises. First the petite women, then the large women, then the beautiful women. Then the large women again. Peacefully and in the hospital bed, not feeling pain, with all the people I love, and getting to say goodbye. And love you. To everyone. My dad died recently of an undiagnosed heart attack, and half a week in the hospital. He couldn't breathe on his own and was stuffed with painkillers, 
but I believe he was so thankful that my mom, my brother and me were there when they turned off the machines. I am pretty sure he was conscious in a way, because he tried to open his eyes when we talked. We all held him and told him that he did a good job as a dad, and honestly it made me think about how I never want to die alone. Edit. Thank you all for your very kind words and also the awards. I didn't even think so many people would read this comment. I really hope you're okay. I am managing I am more worried of my mom, since they had still so many plans that are now gone all of a sudden it's still very surreal to me though I think it will take time until I fully grasp that my dad has died. Except you, Karen. Fuck you. I hope I'll see you soon. Edit. Thank you for the award. I watched a documentary recently and the doctor had been asked how she would want to die. She replied, I'd like to have my health and live today, I learned 100 with all the people I love still around me. And then I'd like to magically turn back into a baby and die in my mother's arms, because there is not a place in the world with more peace and unconditional love. My mom died when I was 24. And honestly, dying in her loving arms would be the most beautiful and peaceful way I could ever hope to imagine. Edit. Thank you for the awards but they aren't necessary. I am just glad it touched so many people as it did myself. I hope we can all pass from this life onto the great beyond held in love, at peace and surrounded by memories. This is so beautiful. I am sorry to hear about your mom. I haven't seen mine in around two years now, and it's definitely painful. That being said, I had a different answer in my head before I read your comment, and now I am going to change my answer to in my mom's arms. But with the stipulation that she feels no sorrow when I go. Just to be that guy, but wouldn't that peaceful death in your mother's arms be terrifying for your mother, hence making it less peaceful? That was actually the subject of the documentary Pediatric Palliative Care. The doctor was advocating for normalizing that sometimes people die. And those people happen to be children. And that we should make sure their families get the support they need to face it with reality, and in so doing honor the child's quality of life and memory the best possible way as opposed to being in denial or fed false hopes in an untenable situation. I have worked in inpatient palliative or hospice care for a little over two years as an RN. A lot of people don't realize how much of my time and effort is given to family. End-of-life care patients, while they still require work, are much less direct work than the patient down the hallway requiring a blood transfusion and initiation of their chemotherapy treatment. Their families, however, are basically patients in their own right. There is a lot of guidance, love, and emotional support to give as the end of the process draws near. Happily, I felt that one. Same. Here have a hug. K. I will not wish the time away, but when it's time to go I hope I wake upon that day, and never get to know. I hope the sky is brightest blue I hope I have hopes to meet, and every word I hear is true, and every sound is sweet. I hope I leave a thousand lives. Improved and saved from strife and so I hope the end arrives. Amidst the joy of life. This feels warm. Way too warm. I think I need some sun protection. Reminds me of that guy that was killed by a missing bullet while eating a sandwich, or was it a burrito? In the park just after tweeting life is good, and a picture of the park, and the sandwich or burrito. Edit. Source. Damn. Completely without warning or pain, in a way that does not bring harm to anyone, and that does not cause excess grief to my friends and family. Edit. I know this comment is idealized, but I think the question allows for that. So a sniper is taking you out it seems. A good sniper. Gets shot in spine. Survives. Now you're a potato. Move to Colorado. 
Get stoned. Be a baked potato. Boil it, mash it, stick it in a stew. Literally what I was going to post. That's how I want to die, random and unknowingly. I don't. At least for the next 200 years, we'll see about it then. Easy, I want to die from the sun exploding at the end of its natural life cycle. I want to have humanity escape and live longer. Personally I think that once we have established a self-sustaining colony, in another system humanity will last forever. It would take an event of unimaginable levels of destruction across a swatch of space reaching light years. But until we reach that milestone and are stuck on just Earth, or even just within our solar system on other planets or moons, we are stuck with extinction as a possible outcome, whether it be of our own doing via global climate change from our constant pollution or war, or from cosmic events beyond anyone's control or aliens coming to colonize our solar system for resources, and wiping us out in the process of terraforming the planet to be livable for them. Evolutionarily speaking by the time we venture out beyond Earth and the solar system, it could be over hundreds of thousands or millions of years, humanity as we know it will cease to exist. It can evolve and branch out into several dozen, or depending on the range of our extraplanetary, and extrasolar exploration hundreds of different distinct successor species. Due to the effects of solar and galactic radiation, zero gravity, different strengths of alien planet's gravity, technological gene editing, and general natural genetic drift will give rise to physiologically and genetically distinct populations who may have homo sapiens as ancestors, but will be entirely separate species. I had a girlfriend die in bed about an hour after sex. I think she did it right. Are you all right? Not really, but that was a decade ago. Damn dude. I thought my life was bad. I'm really sorry you had to go through that. Go check the post he made between those two statements. Whole new world. Welp. You're not wrong lol. Not quite sure what to make of this situation. Life is still fucking bullshit though. We all know that's a story that will just fuck us up for days, but we all know we'll be reading it anyway. I am wondering on the circumstances of his GFS death after reading the comment you're on about. What was the cause if you don't mind my asking? Probably a heart defect. We had a kid die at my school. One moment she was walking in the hall the next moment she was on the ground. A friend of mine suddenly died suddenly from a heart defect when she was 17. Shit like this is scary, you're just walking around, everything seems fine, and then you're gone. Fucking hell dude, hope you're okay. Saving someone else. Edit. Someone said it would need to be two people to make it worth it, which makes sense. There was the nicest young man who used to wait on us at a restaurant we went to frequently. We would always ask for him because we just loved him. Beautiful smile. You could tell he lived for making other people feel good. To be of service. He died saving someone from drowning in the lake. That's a way to go. Yeah maybe but fuck drowning. We get super sad because his birthday comes up every year on Facebook. I am glad I saw this comment because it makes me feel like he's probably at peace and even proud of the way he died. Edited. A brain fart. I was going to answer this before I found yours. This is exactly how I would like to go, sacrificing myself for another. I would go happily knowing I died accordingly to my lifelong goal. Being a good person. I want to be remembered as someone who wished the best for everyone. I really like this one. You get to be remembered and stuff. I don't know but I hope it's cool. Like being eaten by a whale or something. That's fucking terrifying. Have you not seen Finding Nemo? What are you doing? 
Shtihup Wali Eaten by a whale wearing sunglasses. That's a lot better. Found Jonah's Reddit account. Hypothermia. Read in a book as kid that it feels like you're just falling asleep in the context of people in the water from the Titanic but then again. How do they know? Did the people that died of hypothermia write the book? Edit. Apparently it's not as nice as they made it seem. There are stages of hypothermia. By the last stage you don't really feel anything but before that you are going to feel the cold and it's not going to be pleasant. If you ever felt something really cold like dry ice, then I would imagine it is like that, a burning sensation. He must be right, have you ever held ice for an extended period of time? It does burn but if you keep holding the ice eventually you lose all feeling. Also in some tests made to people that feel no fear in a wide variety of tests, even when exposed to pain, they had a different brain structure the only way they got to instill fear into them was to deprive them of oxygen, while using previous methods, turns out that is the scariest thing a human can experience is your worst or any fear that gets amplified by the lack of oxygen. But my guess is that drowning in cold water numbs the senses, and that's why it feels peaceful, but otherwise if you're conscious and afraid I can imagine that being the worst last minutes a human can experience. I heard it's kind of a burning sensation. Well it's only a burning sensation if your body gives up on your vital organs and returns the blood to the skin, in sudden massive increase in temperature relative to what it was makes you feel very hot. That's why people who die of hypothermia are often found with some or most of their clothing taken off. Edit. Grammar. Kinky. Google some pics, it's not kinky. No, I don't think I will. Ironic. Paradoxical even. I think people who came back from Everest and were close to die from hypothermia documented that. They also found people who died from hypothermia in the process of removing their clothes. Nope. Definitely not. It makes sense that they would describe it like that in a kid's book, but reality is quite different. It starts with frostbite, your hands, feet and face burn. Breathing hurts as the mouth and throat are no longer sufficient enough to warm the air entering your lungs. You get a nasty headache, think brain freeze. And this is all the stuff you go through before it gets life-threatening. You can get hypothermia at much warmer temperatures than what you're describing. Hell you can get hypothermia in like 70 degree F water. In a fucking sword battle. A sword battle in space. Dude lightsabers. HMM, I never called it a lightsaber before, and it's baffling to me how that one slipped by. Just to be clear, these are all euphemisms for friends fighting each other with their penises, right? Stab me daddy. What are you doing step knife? Being suffocated by a pretty lady sitting on my face in about 50 to 60 years. You all be disappointing women all the way to the very end. Stop, he's already dead. Or he will be in 50 to 60 years. I was born by the snatch, and I want to die by the snatch. Get kicked down a hole in Sparta. In sweet sweet slow motion. Soon. H A. H A. You okay? No. Bold of you to assume that I can be killed. Delete this shit right now, Steven. No. In my own bed, with a belly full of wine and a maiden's mouth around my cock, at the age of 80. Cool quote. You should put that in a book.
and then make it into a TV show, and completely fuck up the last fucking season, I am still salty as shit about this. What's dead will never die indeed. I know, it's sad that they cancelled it after season 6. We never got to find out who won the Iron Throne. I am assuming it was someone who had an incredible story. I can't think of what character would have such a story to deserve being on the throne. The boar that killed King Fat Ass and started all this. It comes full circle. Hello, I come from an alternate reality where they finished the show. Jon Snow wound up with the throne after an epic battle with Daenerys and her forces, two years after they defeated the White Walkers together. Jon defeated the Night King in single combat, and when Daenerys became a tyrant upon taking the throne, he leads a rebellion with Theon Greyjoy's help, successfully overthrowing the Dragon Queen, and handing Theon the Iron Islands. Sansa becomes Warden of the North, and Arya becomes the new Master of Whispers after Varys retires to help fund and run Tyrion's vineyard. Sander wins Clegane Bowl and moves to the countryside to live the rest of his days in peace. And Cersei is unceremoniously stabbed to death by Jaime, who comes to his senses and realizes how awful she is. I was only in this thread to find this answer. Wow. You are still with us. Thanks for being such a nice person. As long as you are here, why not like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also you can press the bell icon, so you won't miss any future uploads.